I'm joined by Khabran Smith from NEFG. Thanks so much for your time on SABC News. So this trade war again moving markets when when the US president walks back or expresses some discontent, uh, markets seem to get rattled. Should it not be now that people know that this is a long ongoing process that has uh, lots of stops and starts and kind of price that in? I think so. I think uh, I think some of the markets are just too expensive, and you see some of these markets pull back a bit from time to time. Yeah. I don't know always if the media pronounces it correctly because the trade war is these days faulty for about almost everything, mm -hmm. everything in, in world markets. Um, you expect something to be be happening, and the deal should be closed before the elections are next year. When it will be, everybody's guessed. Uh, they arm wrestling a little bit for. For smaller details, um, yeah, all time will tell. Mm -hmm. So, so that that attribution of almost everything going wrong, being like, oh, you know, it's the tra it's the trade tensions. Yeah. We're seeing both U.S. and China markets down. Can that downward be attributed to to the trade war that's taking place and and the rhetoric around what's happening now? Yeah, look, I I think they're taking a bit of a breather. We had a good good session from a few good sessions out of out of the east over the last two or three days. Mm -hmm. Taking a bit of a breather. I think the Hong Kong story is probably a bigger story at the moment in the short term uh, for the eastern markets, and mm -hmm. you see that escalating overnight uh, over the last few days. So yeah, that's probably why we have a negative day in the east this morning. But I mean, the Dow was down about 0.3 percent mm -hmm. yesterday. Not much from the U.S. markets. Okay. Let's come to South Africa now. Uh, we are waiting for that MPC announcement. Are we going to get a rate cut? Yeah, look, we all hope for that. But at the moment, we sit with a lot of fiscal damage that the government has done and, and, and so forth over the last few years. So we need a lot of borrowing. Uh, so we want to be competitive in, in that context. And we know that the SOEs all need money. Uh, so from that point of view, we probably won't cut the rates. Uh, but if you only looked at inflation, that was actually surprisingly low yesterday. Mm. I think normally you would have probably seen a 0.25 rate cut today. Yeah. But I think most economists not predicting anything. I'm hoping for one. Uh, and yeah. I think most consumers in South Africa are hoping for one. So he's, he's, he's sitting in a catch-22. On the one side, he needs, he needs lending from the offshore markets. And he's sitting with twin deficits. And on the other side, he doesn't have growth in South Africa. So in the old days, when you were in a better position from a fiscus point of view, you could have just cut the rates and you would have seen a bit of a better consumer locally. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I think he's, he's, he's probably going to wait out now. Hopefully we'll get a bit of a cut next year, first, first time around. Let's wait and see what happens. So let's take a look at some company news now. Investec results are today. The last time I checked, their share price was down. Maybe I was reading that wrong. What's happening there? Yeah, no, they're down about 2% today. Uh, not the greatest results, but we know the UK is struggling. We know Brexit is struggling. So the UK wealth business is certainly struggling. Assets under management has actually grown by about 8%. I think profit in South African business has grown by about 8%. But of course, the UK business a bit lower, I think around 16 or 70 percent lower. In total, about 5, 15 percent lower if we look at headline earnings per share. Dividend, they, st they stayed the same, so in rand terms it will be up because they report in, in pound terms. Uh, but yeah, there's a bit of cost involved with uh, the demerger of some of their businesses. Uh, and I think if you want to own it, you probably own it for some of those reasons and not about a little mm. bit of lower earnings mm. at the moment. So. I think they're still on track with their earnings on the long term wise. Um, yeah, good business, decent dividend yield, and the biggest asset manager in South Africa. And I think if you look at what the uh, net, net asset value is worth, um, you price the book as well, uh, you're probably looking at a decent entry point here at about 82 rand a share. Okay, let's go to Mr. Price. Their results also came yeah. out. We're speaking about the tough conditions that South Africans find themselves in, especially yeah. consumers often. Does that reflect in any way in the earnings? I think it does. And, and if you look at the earnings, they were down about 7 8%. It depends on how you look at it, either 7 or 10%, uh, if it's headline or not, and so forth. Um, but yes, they certainly got it wrong on the apparel side. So their clothing, they got wrong a bit. Uh, there's also no demand from the consumer out there. Probably the first time in many that they actually seen a decline in headline earnings per share. This is the quality, 
quality company over many years. So they got that wrong. They had to sell some of those stock out at, at bargain prices to the consumers. They say that they've gotten it right now. The last two months are looking better. Mm -hmm. And that's why you would probably see um, the share price increasing. Is the, the people mm -hmm. optimistic about the last two months and they probably got their fashion right for the next year. So I think the share price actually increased about 11 or 12 percent today. Okay. Brett releasing a cautionary announcement around debt and clarifying an earlier SENS report. Genuinely, what's happening there? Yeah, look, it's been a downward spiral for uh, over a long period of time. We know New Look has trouble in, in, in the UK as well. They got in the rescue and they uh, done the leases over. They closed some of those businesses, etc. But yeah, they, the, most of the other businesses are actually much more worth than what the share price is at the moment. So from that point of view, probably value underlying uh, in the holding company. We all were worried about the debt restructuring that needs to take in place. So this was probably positive. You saw the, the, the share price increasing about about 10%. Mm. Um, it looks like they've, they've done some deals there. They will announce it later. And then if you look at the last day or two with Rengre and RMH announcing they're unbundling their first round, they're saying something similar in these things, that the holding companies are starting to unbundle some of their, their net asset values or the, some of the part valuations, and that would probably be positive for them, and that's why they increased 10%. Okay, and finally, let's go back overseas. The Uber CEO buying around yeah. 250,000 shares. I mean, is that, is that a big deal if you're the CEO of like a multi-billion or uh, like valued company? Yeah, look, I don't think in this context, uh, he's, he's pretty new in the job. Yeah. The ex-CEO has actually sold $875 million of shares over the last year. Uh, so to put this in context, I think it's about... 6.6 or 6.7 million dollars worth of shares. Mm. Um, the new CEO is about net worth is about 200 million dollars. So it's about mm. three, four percent of his his assets. He must believe that there's something positive going on uh, in, U in Uber at the moment. Um, so maybe he sees something positive going forward. But yeah, I don't think Not we that. need to read too much into yeah. some of those. Gabran Smit from NEFG, thanks so much for your time on SABC News, looking at the market picture there. It's time for.